We finally released Conto.log, guys. I'm so excited for this. I feel we deserve a round of applause. So this video is going to show you how to use Conto.log in AppSmith. If you've ever used Conto.log in JavaScript, it's going to be the same experience. Or if you're coming from a different programming language, for example, um, using the print function in Python or Java or C out in C++, it is going to be the same experience here as well. So the idea of using Contour Log is to help you have a better debugging experience while building complex apps on AppSmith. And I think the Contour Log is just going to save you a lot of time trying to troubleshoot your apps because it makes it so much easier to find bugs and build really cool apps on AppSmith. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Contour.log in two parts. First, we're going to take a look at how to use Contour.log in JavaScript files or JS objects. Then, we'll also take a look at how to use Contour.log in inline JavaScript or in between bindings. All right, enough of me talking. Let me show you how this actually works. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. Awesome, so let's start by taking a look at using Contour.log in a JavaScript file. Honestly, it's actually really straightforward, but let's start by um, trying to debug or log the response of an API call. So here, I'm going to go ahead to create a new API. So let's go create an API. And I'm just going to leave it as default API 1. And this is going to be a GET request to the mock endpoint. So as you can see, we have a bunch of users in the response pane and this is an array. So this works and let's go ahead to create a JavaScript function that would run this API in our behalf. By the way, we can call this API the get users API. All right, so let's create a JavaScript function. So I'm going to create a JS object and we can call this app.js. All right, that looks good. So let's delete the boilerplate code and we're going to have a get users function. So what we want to do in this function is that we want to execute the get users API. And we want to save that response in a variable called res. So this is going to be const res equals to await get users dot run. That looks good. Now to actually log the response from this API, we can use console.log. So let's do that. So this is going to be console.log and this is going to be res and we can end this with a um, semicolon and that looks good. So to actually see the response from the log, what we need to do is we need to go to the logs tab and we can actually also filter just by console logs. I don't have this function executed yet, so I'm going to execute it right now and you should be able to see all of the logs. So this is the exact response you saw from the API call. Now we're able to see it as a console log and we can see the entire user's array right here. Now we can actually go on to use multiple logs because this is a console log and this is JavaScript, of course. So we can do something like, so let's say res, actually, um, let's use array destructuring here. So I just want to pull out the users, all right? So I'm going to log just users. All right, and let's say users at index zero. What I want to do is, I want to change the ID of the first user to something else. So this is one right now. So I'm going to set your ID to five and let's do console.log um, user, users index zero. So here we have two logs, one of the entire user array and the second log of the specific user we just modified. So let's run this. So I'm going to go ahead to run this. And as you can see, let's expand this a bit because we can actually expand the height of the pane. You see we have two logs. The first one is of the entire user array, which has nine users, 10 users right now. And here is the user we just modified. We changed the user ID to five and we're able to see that log here. So this makes building complex apps so much easier because you can inspect the state of your application at various points. And of course, you can also still use the return statement. So we can go in here to uh, do something like, let's say return users, all right. And if I go to 
execute this so i'm going to go to the response pane and execute this you can see that we have the users coming back which is just awesome so we're both able to use logs and return statement this works exactly as you'd expect it to and of course all of the logs are going to be in the logs pane so this is just awesome now you can also use the console log function inside of inline javascript or within bindings that's the quality braces the mustache syntax so let me show you how this works i'm going to go to the canvas i'm going to grab a button widget so let's go grab a button widget and here whenever the button is clicked on i want to just log out something so let's say i want to do console.log and let's log lorem ipsum all right and here to actually see the logs what i need to do is open up the debugger pane by clicking on this little button to the corner right here so i'm going to click on this and here we have the exact same logs pane i'm going to clear this out and let's also filter by console logs so if i go ahead to click on this as you expect this actually shows lorem ipsum and i can keep clicking on this to view the response from using the console log within this button so it's possible for you to use console log in inline JavaScript. You just have to set it up like you would with any JavaScript binding in AppSmith. Now, we actually support more console methods. Like you can go ahead to do a console.1. All right, so let's click the button and you see a warning here. We can also do console.error and let's go ahead to click on the button and you see an error here so all of this is supported on AppSmith we're working to add support for console.table so that you can easily visualize and array data within the console view right here so that's going to be coming soon but if you need more console methods please let us know go ahead to create an issue on github and let us know about your needs but that's about it with using console dog on AppSmith Alright, that's all I have for you today guys. If you'd love to learn more, go check out this video on how to debug better by using the debugger and linter on AppSmith. So go check this out. And also check out this video if you'd love to learn how to make better promises with async await on AppSmith. So go check out these two videos to learn more. Alright, that's all for today's video. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, get subscribed, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.